Ooh, what age do I feel like a woman? I don't know. There are days where I don't think I am. I feel like a kid sometimes. But um, I think it happened probably when I turned 30 is when I was like, all right, I'm on my grown-up shit now. Like, you know, I, I felt like there were things that changed. I knew I was a woman when I turned 26 and I was working in TV news and I was relatively uh, young as a producer and then a correspondent um, to the point where I was not treated particularly well by the older male, often my colleagues are photographers frankly, um, and, and they were just very dismissive. And then sort of when I turned 26 I stopped being young. You know 26 isn't old but you're not young. And it was weird. That year was such a great year for me because everyone sort of realized, like, oh, she's not young anymore. God, I did not know I was a woman until uh, I turned the age I am now. It took me a really, really long time to be comfortable with my body, uh, with my ideas about what a woman is and what she looks like. Um, loving androgyny, um, because I think that's fun. Um, and still knowing that on the inside there is this fire-filled black girl who is just full of ideas um, and desires and um, a lot of it is because I am a woman. Wow, that's what does it mean to be a woman? Um, it means um, owning who you are, owning where you came from, your past, your present, and where you're going in the future. My whole life when I was little, even when I was like 10 years old, I remember people being like, you a little woman, you, you're really a 40 year old in a 10 year old's body. My uncle Jeffrey, <laughs> he used to call me Susan Lucci. <laughs> I always had so much attitude. I'm always a woman, I'm a female. Um, but being a lady is a choice, and, and that to me is even bigger than, than being a woman. I, I love being a lady, and that means um, having a certain level of integrity, a certain level of dignity in the way that you carry yourself, and a certain level of self-respect. Being a woman is just probably one of the most wonderful things that you can experience. Number one, we are the mother of all humanity. We give birth and life to those who understand that without a woman, there would be no man. Without a man, there would be no woman. And so what it truly means is just celebrating our femininity. To be a woman is to be a chameleon. It's, it's changing, it's adapting, um, it is being strong, it is being resilient, it is being uh, full of life. It's an honor for me to be a woman. It's such a, a gift, it's such a blessing. I think women are the most beautiful thing that God could have created. I mean, the sass, the intelligence, the strength, the brilliance, you know, like women are so complex. And I feel like women are the foundation of society. When do I feel my most powerful? That's a really, really good question. I feel most powerful when I am serving. I know that sounds strange, but the word says that I came to serve and not to be served, and that's the position that Christ took. And so I really, truly feel the same way. I feel most empowered when I'm serving others. I guess I would say I felt most powerful when playing basketball. Uh, I guess when I think of power, I think of me really asserting my strength, um, but maybe in business now. Being my own boss, but also being a wonderful mom and wife, I feel very powerful in the fact that I'm able to manage life after basketball. I feel most powerful when I look at my husband. Probably when I wake up in the morning, because I did it again, I woke up again. Do you know, every single day is new, and you know that the possibilities are endless every day. When I'm holding my son, when I have my son in my arms, and I'm just holding him, and we're just having a moment together, because I'm like, this is my son. God has given him to me as a gift, and I gave birth to him. That's powerful. What is power? Power is so many things. I think sometimes personal power is the ability to say no to something, whatever that may be. No to the thing that looks like it's going to pay you a whole lot of money, but makes your heart feel funny. The definition of power changes over time as you sort of grow and mature. I think 
When I was younger, I thought of power as sort of the, the ability to make people do what you wanted them to do. And, and now I define power as the opportunity to open up other opportunities for people. Women were a really powerful force, and I think that we need to own that more. Sometimes we could be viewed as not being smart, not being strong, not being independent, but we can. The most challenging part about being a woman is that there are more men in business than women. And you don't know if you should go to the office um, in stilettos or J's. Um, you don't know if you should be intimidating and stand on a table or if you should be soft um, and speak like your grandmother. It's a challenge. You want to be respected. Being in any industry, being in the workforce, you deal with people that say inappropriate things or, um, you know, say, make jokes about you or about, you know, being a woman or something like that. That's never appropriate in any workforce. Um, and I think it takes a lot of strength to stand up for yourself and to not let people do that to you. Sisterhood is important because we all need each other. As much as I think, it's, it's unfortunate that females always want to kind of, um, I don't know, our instinct sometimes is to not be accepting of other females, but we do really need each other. You know, it's a sisterhood that we is that you can't get from relationships with men. It's cool to have a husband and to be able to talk to him about certain things but there's certain things that you can only talk to or about to your sister or to a woman. For me and my sort of version of the sisterhood is just having great friends, great female friends who you sort of navigate life and, and, and work and career and family with. It's the only thing you get to choose. You don't get to choose your family. So when you choose your friends you need to be real careful about that and make sure that there are people who do support you. And I don't mean yes men. I mean, people who are like, girl, you know, that may not be, uh, maybe I would not do that. That may not be the best, but when you need me, I'm here. I just have to keep it real. You can never underestimate the power of the JJ. <laughs> you know, I never necessarily thought of women as having a, a power in sexuality. Um, I never really thought about that. I guess I always just thought there was an incredible power in your body in being a mother. In my last pregnancy, I had twins. I knocked out 15 pounds as a baby, and, and there you are, you know, pushing them in the stroller the next day and walking around and, and taking care of them and helping them and nursing them and, and, and bathing them. And, and I just thought, wow, like, it is amazing what the human body can do when the maternal instinct is so strong. Um, I never thought of it in terms of of sexuality, uh, and I'm not even sure that I, I think of there's a power in sexuality as much more of a power in, in confidence. Uh, you know what, sensuality and the woman, uh, I think, go hand in hand uh, with me. I love that we can um, be so alluring uh, with ourselves, with our presence, uh, and I don't mind uh, knowing that. To be honest with you, I don't know that I've ever actually been totally comfortable with that part of my being to a certain degree in that I've never tried to be sexy in my music, in my videos. It's just, it's just a natural presence and I don't think that forcing, um, you know, being a woman and, you know, having my boobs shoved up all the, you know, I, I just, my whole thing is just always classic and beautiful and elegant and um, the sexuality is, you know, in my professional career I kind of um, have never used that as a marketing tool. Well, I started doing pageants when I was very young and so um, I kind of went through a process of understanding and the comparing of what beauty was. So pageants make you kind of quantify what beauty is. And I, I never understood that until I started competing in pageants and it was like, oh, she's taller, she's thinner, she's this, she's that. And so you started understanding that there was a need to present the best you and that you were going to at times be measured against uh, the next person. I felt like I lost my power when I shaved my head. 
I felt like no one took me seriously anymore. I felt like all of a sudden um, I wasn't pretty, I wasn't sweet, I wasn't feminine to other people. And I felt like I gave a lot away. Um, it was a really, really tough time when I had to look within. And that is when I realized that it's about me, my personality, my heart, my soul. When I see a woman who is just raw and just confident in who she is and rocking whatever she is, whether that's a woman who likes to wear tattoos and who has a sleeve down her arm, but she's rocking it, that's who she is, and she's confident with that. And, and a woman could be confident in, in full hair and makeup and, and full wardrobe and, and be confident, that's great too, but I think what's awesome is when you see a woman who's just in a white shirt and jeans and flip-flops and just natural and she's like, this is me, this is who I am. If you like me, you like me. If you don't, you don't. Yesterday I was walking down the street looking real casual. And this dude is behind me coming up the stairs in the subway. I could feel him behind me because, you know, as a woman in the city, you need to know where people are. You need to know their proximity. And so I could feel him. And, uh, and I got up and I was coming down the sidewalk and I hear from behind me, you know you fly, right? <laughs> I was like, I literally looked to see who he was talking to. I was like, he could possibly be talking to me right now. Um, you know, but to him in that moment, in my jeans and Converse's, that was hot. And I, and I thank him for that. We all get in situations where sometimes somebody makes you frustrated or angry or make you um, kind of you, you fall off your fall off your square for a second. But I think it's always taking a step back and taking a breath and asking yourself, like, all right, what's the situation? You know, I I like the saying uh, someone once said that, uh, you know, your rights end where my rights begin. <laughs> and that's when you know that someone's violated your power and trying to take your power away. You just gotta take it back. Being a, a black woman, it's like uh, fighting against being put in a box because I'm always, you know, I'm a multifaceted person, human being first. And sometimes I'd be like, now I know if I was a man, you would not say that. It's like, oh, Stop being so difficult, and it's like, I'm not difficult, I'm very focused and I know what I want. I remember um, when I was little, trying to learn how to ride a bike. I would go up and down the driveway trying to learn how to ride this bike. And at one point my dad came out and said, oh, you know, you're going to be able to learn how to ride this bike by the end of the day because you are the kind of person who once you put your, your mind to something, you just try until you get it. And as a 30 year old, I remembered that same phrase, like, oh, I'm the kind of girl who, once I put my mind to it, I keep trying until I get it. It really became very defining for me, and I think I got a lot of my, my sense of ability and accomplishment from that being reflected back to me by my dad, who, who was just really commenting on me trying to learn to, to ride a two-wheel bike. I'm really enjoying seeing so many women who are presidents of networks, who are executive producers. We are running the show. Like, women really are, and I think that says a lot. We have to embrace the way God made us, full and through. You know, our hair texture, our skin color, our body types. Like, you could be, some, some, someone's gonna tell you one day you're too skinny. Someone's gonna tell this person they're too big. You know, you're never gonna be perfect to everybody. And it's not important to please people, you know? Like, it's so important to embrace the way God made you. And, um, that's something, you know, that's that's an ongoing challenge, though. It's not something you, I think, you ever, like, lock solid, you know, have under control. It's something you got to work at every single day. It's a work in progress.